Alright everybody, welcome back to another episode in the Advanced MCDU Tips and Tricks. I might have to change that name a little bit just because uh, the more I look to find advanced functions in these McDo boxes, whether it be in the TOLUS or the Flight Factor, I'm coming to find out that they are not fully modeled yet. So I know there's a big FMGC update coming for the TOLUS 319 and version 1.4, but until then we're going to have to make do with what we have. So for today's video, I'm going to show you how to properly do an air return to the same airport you depart from without using the secondary flight plan. Now 99% of the time you're most likely going to just have your secondary flight plan ready to go and you can select heading, activate secondary and come right back around to the airport. Now I have that illustrated in a flight vector 320 which I'll post later this week but for today's video we're going to learn how to do it in the 319 without using the secondary flight plan since that function is not modeled. All right, we are sitting at Dallas-Fort Worth on runway 17 right. The aircraft has started. We are ready for departure. So I'm going to take off and we're just going to simulate that, hey, we need to have a air return and come back to the gate. So it would probably be briefed by the flight crew, something along the lines of, okay, in case of an engine failure, fire, or whatever it may be, we're going to fly straight out, clean up, speed up, make left traffic back around and land on one seven right. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to simulate some kind of failure, or some kind of reason to return to the airfield, and we're going to put the aircraft in heading mode, we're going to level off, and we're going to reload the box to reset the destination to be Dallas-Fort Worth. As you can tell now, this aircraft is programmed to go from Dallas to Phoenix with a flight plan fully loaded and no return without the secondary. So the best way to do it, in my opinion, will be as follows. Man flex, let's rush runway, auto thrust blue. He did not thrust it. Neutral by a hundred. V1, uh, rotate. Positive rate, gear up. So let's say at this point, we had either an engine failure or something that caused us to return to the airfield. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and select heading. Fly heading 175. We need to reach our acceleration altitude before we can level off. Say so TOLUS 319, maintain 3,000 feet, lever climb. Thrust climb, auto thrust, two for three. I'm gonna go ahead and activate autopilot one for ease of uh, this video for me to talk to you guys. All right, so we are 2.5 leveling 3,000. The aircraft is in heading mode. Make sure you aviate first. I'm also going to select speed and say I want my speed to be 200 knots. Speed Alt Star. As we get ready to retract our flaps here at flap retraction speed, there it is, flap zero. And now let's go ahead and work on the box. So, best way to do this, let's go ahead and come and hit your flight plan key. We're gonna do a lateral revision. So in order to do a lateral revision, we're gonna select L2 here, or a waypoint. We don't wanna do it from the intercept here, we wanna do it from L2. And then we're going to bring up the lateral revision box. From this box right here, we're going to enter new destination. We're going to enter KDFW, where we just took off from. Insert that. Insert. Now it's going to clear up your box. At this point, we're probably going to start getting radar vectored back around. So we'll say 319, fly heading 070. Expect radar vectors to ILS 17 right. Okay, so we're expecting ILS 17 right. Now in a real two crew environment, the pilot not flying would be managing the box and talking to air traffic control, while the pilot flying would just be focusing on flying the aircraft. So I'm doing a little bit of both here, but that's because we don't have good dual, dual crew. So now that I've put the new destination in the box here, I'm gonna go ahead and just like we normally do, select DFW, arrival, and we're going to select our runway 17 right. We're going to go no star, 
no via insert now we hit insert again and if you look at our flight plan box here we have just loaded the ILS to 17 right all right told us 319 probably get another vector fly heading 360 all right now that we have our runway back in the box what we need to do is get our performance data set up this is why having that secondary flight plan is so important because you don't have to do any of this with a secondary flight plan now we have to do it manually so first thing we do we come to the approach phase make sure we are in selected speed activate confirm the approach phase we're going to put our in environmentals 29 or decimal 9 or 5 The temperature outside was 32 and winds were 210 at 8. The DA for this airport is 762, the MDA for this approach. All right, so now our approach is set back up. Approach phase has been activated. Let's go ahead and start configuring for the return. We're going to reduce speed, come right back to 180 knots. Let's go flaps 1. And there's VFE next, minus 10. We're going to go ahead and activate flaps 2. All right, now the aircraft is, we're just flying the aircraft like we would normally be. One other thing we want to do here is we need to cycle the box. So you can see that LARN in the top right corner is the current waypoint. We don't want LARN, we want Yalta. So what we need to do, we need to do what's called clear P-Pause. We're going to go ahead and hit the clear button. And we're going to clear our present position, which was L1. Once I did that, now I've recycled the FMGC to show the current waypoint is Yalta. That matches with our approach fix right here. That looks good. So make sure after you put in the approach, and after you're on a downwind, make sure that your check, we call this check right corner right here, because this is the current fix. We want to make sure that this matches our approach fix. So if you still have something from the departure, like we had LARN in there, that was from the departure procedure, make sure you clear that out and you're showing Yalta on your approach. So now the aircraft is completely configured for landing on 17 right. We're at 180 knots, still we're being vectored towards the downwind and everything looks good. At this point, we'd probably be running comm procedures, working through any emergencies, talking to company, talking to dispatch, talking to the passengers, whatever it may be, this would be the time to do it. Once that has been completed, we say, hey, we're ready to accept an approach now. We say, okay, told us 319, descend and maintain 2000, turn left heading 340. We'll come left to 340. Start our descent. Now you want to make sure that once you set up the box, you also set up the airplane. So after we've got our box set up and we're ready for the approach, just like we do on a normal flight, get your LS push buttons on, select your auto brakes if applicable, maybe you need terrain, whatever it may be, make sure you also set up the airplane. That's the challenge when we're in this flight sim and we don't have two crew. You know, as a one crew pilot on this dual crew airplane, you need to make sure you're also setting up the aircraft as well as the box. So now everything looks pretty good here. We're going to get another vector back around. All right. Tola 319, turn left, heading 290, intercept the localizer. Here comes the glide slope. Glide slope star. Here's coming down, VFE next minus 10. Let's go flaps three. And VFE next minus 10, flaps full. And we are back on final approach for only 17 right. We've been airborne probably less than five minutes and we've successfully executed our return to field programming for ILS 17 right. We'll go ahead and ding the flight attendants there, arm the spoilers. Here we go. Now all we have to do is land the airplane. 4,000 feet stable.